everyone, and welcome to Inside Healthcare. This show marks our ninth year for our award-winning program, and we're so grateful to viewers like you for joining us every month, so thank you so much. In this program, we will be talking with one of the Twin Cities' leading fitness and nutrition experts who will have great tips for you on how to get fit and be healthy during this new year. But first, in local healthcare news, the Minnesota Hospital Association and the March of Dimes are recognizing 35 Minnesota hospitals for their efforts in reducing early elective deliveries. That list includes all of the healthiest maternity units at St. John's Hospital, St. Joseph's Hospital, and Woodwinds Health Campus. The health and safety of hospital's smallest patients is of the utmost importance, and helping newborns get a strong start improves their health and well-being later in life. All the Minnesota hospitals recognize are, had less than 5% early elective delivery rate before 39 weeks of gestational age, whereas the national average is 10 to 15% of all deliveries, according to the Centers for Medicare and Medicaid Services, or CMS. So now we turn our attention to talking about your well-being in 2014. And as you know, the number one New Year's resolution to get in shape in the new year is getting in shape. So to help you do just that, we're very pleased to have back with us Rachel Larson, and she's a registered dietitian and certified per personal fitness trainer. Thank you, Rachel, for being with us. You're welcome. She's located at the Ways to Wellness program in Woodbury. Mm -hmm. She also has a bunch of other credentials to her name. She holds a Stout Pilates Reformer Level 2 certification, has Yoga Fit Level 4 training, as well as Yoga Fit for pre and prenatal and senior patients population. And she's also a corrective exercise specialist and a certified boxing trainer. So thank you again, Rachel, for being with us. Thank you for reading that long list of what I've been up to for these last few years. So as long as you don't There's start punching here on the set here. So um, <laughs> how does someone get started trying to get fit in the new year? I mean, everyone yeah. wants to do this. And then I think even mm -hmm. more importantly is once you get started, how do you keep motivated past the month of January? Yeah, well, one of the first things that a person wants to do is, is to look at their fitness as more of a, I want to do this because I want to feel good all the time, not just I want to feel good for two weeks or four weeks. And in a nutshell, to have a plan. To have a plan. And if you're not quite sure what that plan looks like, you just start somewhere. Um, we have at Ways to Wellness, we've got health and wellness coaches and of course nutrition and fitness coaches as well to help figure out what you want to achieve, what you want to work on. And then we, we make that into actionable steps. In other words, okay, I want to be fit. What does that mean? That means based on what you're looking for, you're going to exercise three times a week because we talked about that and that sounds like it's something you're ready to do. And one of those days is going to be, for instance, running. Another day is going to be strength training. And another day is going to be attending this class here at our facility. It makes it concrete. I know exactly what I need to do. I know where I need to be. And I know what I'm going to achieve and how, you know, what I'm going to get out of that. Because if a person says, well, I'm going to start exercising. If I told you, Jody, yeah. you need to start exercising, um, go forth, be yeah. prosperous. You know, what, where, where do you, you start? Right, yeah. where, where do you, do you start? Do? And so to have, to have a plan, and every plan is different. You know, everyone's, everyone's different. What I do isn't what you would do, isn't what, you know, my husband does for his fitness routine. Everyone Everyone needs a little something different. So what are some of those tips that you give to your clients? What are some key things that really make the difference that you've seen success with your clients? Those key pieces. Accountability is a big one. And when you say for my clients, those are those folks that continue to come back. And when you keep coming back every week, twice a week, three times a week, whatever that might be, they know they're going to have to see me. And they're going to say, <laughs> boy, um, I ate that extra brownie. Or you know what? I passed up that candy dish. I passed it up. It's always out, and, and, I, and I didn't have any today, and I feel awesome. You know, celebrating those small successes together, to have that person, me, or whichever coach it might be, whichever trainer, um, to celebrate those small successes with you because it's those small things, walking by the candy dish or whatever it is, mm -hmm. that make some of the biggest differences in our life. So accountability, to have a person to talk to about it, to have a coach to pick you up, to lift you up, and to encourage you, someone you have to answer to. Yeah. And then I think another one that I've uh, I've experienced personally is just writing down everything I eat through the day. It's hard A to do that. Log. It's hard to find time mm -hmm. to do that, but I know it's very effective. Nutrition logs are one of the most effective ways to maintain weight loss once it's achieved. 
So again, that's to maintain once weight loss achieved. once it's achieved. So now, now, now this is an interesting concept to talk about because it's not always hard to lose weight. Let me, let's talk about it. How many times have we all lost 10 pounds and gained it back? Yes, that, that right? was me I mean, how many year, times yeah. have we done that? But how many times have we lost 10 pounds and kept it off? That's the trick. It's maintaining that success that you've achieved. And you're right, food logging, writing it down, it's a form of accountability is what it is. And um, some folks are very adverse to food logging, and that's okay. But why? Is it because you don't want to see what you've been up to? <laughs> mm -hmm. or, or is it truly a hindrance, and, and writing it down is just not as great? Sometimes we can just keep a mental log as well. You know, you pay attention to what you ate for breakfast. What did I eat? Did it taste good? Did I enjoy it? Was it good for me? Great. You know, and then before, before we eat anything, to just mentally log it. What have I had so far today? Is this going to be nourishing my body? Is this going to be giving me what I need? And then there's also the, um, there's a lot of online programs now where well, you can sure keep are. a log, a mm -hmm. food log, and also your fitness log too. Yep, there, there are no shortage of excellent applications now. I mean, everything is technology, and so there's no, no excuse not to find a way to do it. There's even an application, and, and forgive me for not, for not remembering the name of it. It's probably something really simple like photo. But, um, <laughs> but it's an or application where you, you take a picture of your, your plate of food or your snack, and oh, it logs it. I hadn't heard about that And one. it puts it right in to your log. And so it's a visual log of what I've eaten today instead of having to go in and you know, type in um, green beans with one tablespoon of butter. You take a picture of it. And then you look over oh, your log awesome. for the day and you can see, well, what did I eat? And you literally see it. So for visual people, this is a really, really cool application. Um, the application I've been using most is MyFitnessPal because it just seems to be the simplest and I've been using it for, for years now. And well, you know, I'm kind of old fashioned. So what worked then will work now. And so I'm kind of stuck on that. Uh, Spark, Spark People is another great application. Um, you can actually enter your recipes into both of those apps, the MyFitnessPal and the Spark People. Um, with all of the ingredients, and it'll give you a breakdown then of per what serving. you've eaten. Right, so or for like the casseroles serving? and like the different mixed foods, you can put that recipe in, and then per serving, it will enter that data for you. So you could say, you know, half cup of southwestern bean casserole, mm -hmm. and it'll, it'll put your carbs or protein and your fat and your fiber and all that good stuff in without you having to itemize every single ingredient. And so that can be done too. What about, I mean, you often hear people saying, oh, I'm going on this diet or this diet. Diets don't work, do they? Well, it's, it's back to um, they, they, maintaining the weight loss is, that's is what why it they comes don't back work. to. Yeah. Right, because, because diets are excellent at helping you lose weight but they're not good at helping you keep that weight loss to maintain it. And so at Waste to Wellness, we do things a little differently. Um, we look at lifestyle change. We look at realistic, realistic nutrition, realistic fitness, and we teach each person how to incorporate that into their own personal life. And what would that look like? What does realistic nutrition and realistic fitness look like? I know it yep, varies yep. from person to person, but what would that look like? Okay. Well, we kind of we kind of talk about it in terms of the 80/20 rule. 80% 80 of the time, you are eating what what you would consider and what you understand to be healthful, nourishing foods to the body. Mm -hmm. And then you know we've got that little bit of wiggle room with the 20%. In other words, it means there are no perfect diets. There are no perfect ways of eating. And, and there's no bad or good foods. And there are no bad or food, bad or good foods, correctly. Um, I, I, would, I would venture to say that there are some foods that are worse <laughs> than others, um, but we don't, we don't need to go into the specifics on that. But you know, to, to unload the guilt associated with food choices we've made too. If we are starting to feel badly about what we've eaten, Oftentimes, if we let that bad feeling linger, and now we feel um, like, like we've, you know, we're, we, we lost, we did, we did bad, and we're, we're looking down on ourselves, we're probably going to go and eat less healthy foods again because we're down on ourselves. So to reflect, I could have done that differently. What might that have looked like? Okay, move forward. Mm -hmm. and, and, you know, lighten the load. Be nice to yourself. That's another thing. Just be nice to yourself. No one's perfect. You know, and I was thinking when you were talking to that some <coughs> foods or, or drinks, you know, they're very popular having like different lattes and things, but those mm -hmm. also can be loaded with lots of 
um, empty calories. Oh, excellent point. Excellent point. You're right. This the the Starbucks and the Caribou Dunn Brothers. All of those um, specialty drinks, the frappuccinos and mochas and things like that. I mean, those are easily three to five hundred calories, depending on if you get your, their small size or their large size. That's almost size. like a meal, right? Yes, <laughs> and it's sugar and fat. So it's a meal with all the wrong... With all the wrong ingredients. Drinks. I mean, the, the coffee that's in that is the best thing that's in there because there are some antioxidant qualities mm -hmm. and it aids in digestion. But um, yeah, you gotta watch those drinks. Uh, they do have light drinks, you know, like the, the skinny mochas or something like that. Um, they don't always taste the best because there's like fake sugar in there. Do what you gotta do, reduce your sizes, and so Jody, that's, that's a really good idea. If a person is consuming regularly, you know, a mocha five times a week, every time on the way to work, that's their happy place. They go through their happy place, Starbucks or Caribou, and they pick up their, their mocha. Maybe, maybe just cutting back on that, going twice, and on the other days, getting something like a regular black coffee, adding a touch of cream, that would be better than the other. And that can mean losing a pound every three weeks, just by that small change. Wow. Just by that small change, yep. What would be another tip that you would give, like a, a change that someone could make, incorporate into their daily life that could have good results like that as well? Permanent results. Permanent results. Well, I would have to say logging your fruits and vegetables. Um, we know we're talking about diet right now, at least I, I got mm -hmm. on the diet train. Um, vegetables are the food group that Americans just really under eat. Vegetables provide the fiber, lots of vitamins and minerals. The fiber is the really big though. Fiber is so big, it's our body's internal scrub brush. And I tell you, if you wanna feel good, you want your digestive system to be healthy and happy. They're naturally low in calories. And when we don't have those vegetables in there, we replace it with oftentimes high fat meats, extra grains, and we don't feel good. Mm -hmm. and it zaps our energy. And so uh, a tip today, a takeaway, would be to shoot for eating two cups of vegetables a day. Now to some people, I mean their jaw might drop, like oh my gosh, that is so much. <laughs> but thinking through vegetables that, that aren't so bad, you know, that you might even learn to like, mm -hmm. that would be good. So and uh, people that I know that have lost the weight, kept it off, mm -hmm. have really incorporated fitness exercise into mm -hmm. their daily routine mm -hmm. and yep. um, not only, not necessarily even going to a gym, but they're just more active, more physical. They're taking the stairs. They're just doing things constantly to keep their body moving. Mm -hmm. So obviously that would be an important element of trying to not only lose the weight, but keep it off. Correct. Fitness tends to ground people. To have a fitness routine, it will keep people on track and on task. I worked out, I don't want to ruin it by eating that Snickers bar. And, and for other reasons, it really pumps up our energy. It helps to clear our minds and we can focus better on our work. And a daily, a daily fitness routine is important. Every day if you do something, that's going to keep you going. And um, there's some fitness um, tips that you're going to show us right now that you, you can bet. do while you're watching us. Yeah, and you're going to so, join in for a few, I will. right? Absolutely. Okay. Yeah, even if my high heels. Okay. <laughs> so, so what's going to be fun about this, Jody, is we're going to do a few exercises that you can do from your chair. Okay. So this can be done at work. While this you're can be done us? while while you're watching the show right now. So you can tell those viewers to to get on the edge of their chairs and get ready. Okay. Um, I would I would caution folks though. Make sure that if whatever chair you're sitting in, that it is not going to slide on the floor. So I want to say that right away, that that, that that base that we're sitting on is very secure so that we're all safe. Okay. Okay? We're going to work on our arms. We're going to bring so our if hands. You have a, a chair with arms. Yep, we've got a chair with arms. And if not, um, you know, do what you can. But the exercise is a tricep press up. And so you're trying to lift the body weight by pushing your arms down into those arm rests. And, you know, if the arms aren't strong enough, well, the legs can help out. But the idea is to try and use your arms more than your legs as though your legs have fallen asleep and you have to push yourself up okay. with your arms. Yeah. So we're working our triceps, a little bit of the shoulder muscle, and um, yeah, into the chest a little bit as well. So let's just do a couple more. Okay. Invigorating, right? <laughs> kind of fun. <laughs> oh, I use the fun word again. Yes. Okay, I always, I always say that. All right, now we're gonna do an exercise for the legs. And so we're gonna try not to use the armrests okay. and just use 
our balance and the strength in our legs to pick us up. So maybe widen the feet just a little, okay. so we're not like on a balance beam, and try not to use the hands. Maybe that's bringing the arms out in front to help pull you forward a little. Um, otherwise, let's bring the hands just across the collarbones. Okay. Okay, now we're gonna push down into the floor with our feet and then just pick our hips up. Now, I went halfway up. <laughs> we can go all the way up or we can just go halfway. They're both correct, they're both right. Sometimes just starting to pick your body up is all we need to do. Okay. And so how many to do of all of these? I usually say 15 to 20 of these lower intensity, not too terribly tough exercises. And I can tell I'm doing it with my heels, so it's not putting the pressure exactly where I want it. Right, and yep. Jody, you've got some you've got some high heel shoes on, so that just goes to show you can exercise in any kind of footwear. <laughs> just do one more time okay. here, and sometimes uh, sometimes those heels, um, actually doing squats and heels, believe it or not, Help. is easier on the knees. Oh, because our calves are so tight naturally. That's the corrective exercise specialist coming out in me. Okay. Yeah. And then a couple of other things. A couple of other things. So. Maybe a little bit of a maybe a little bit of a stretch okay. for the arms there. So bringing one arm across the front and giving it a little bit of a hug okay. is going to be good for Feels the, good. the shoulder. You know the neck gets really tight. Nice stretch in that shoulder. Back yeah. gets tight during the day sitting at the computer. And then driving. how long would you hold it for? You know, twenty to thirty seconds and switch. Maybe okay. do it a couple times. Yeah. And uh, what about breathing while we're doing this? Oh, fantastic! Yeah. Yes, inhaling through the nose and exhaling either through the nose or through the mouth. They're Feels both good. correct. Yeah, focusing on the breathing. It helps to calm the body down. Yeah, good stuff. Feels really good. Yeah, so those are just a few things that you can do anywhere. Okay, we're gonna take a short break here and then when we come back, Rachel's gonna show us some other things that you can do right at home while you're watching us. So stay with us, everyone. All right, thanks. of a car crash. Three out of four kids are not as secure as they should be because their car seats are not used correctly. But the latch system makes it easier to get it right and to hold your kids tight. Anchor. Tether. Latch. Learn more at safercar.gov. Welcome back to Inside Healthcare. Joining us, of course, is Rachel Larson. She's a nutrition and fitness specialist with Ways to Wellness in Woodbury. So she is now going to demonstrate some exercises, simple ones that you can do right now while you're watching us. So take it away, um, Rachel. Okay, thank you. All right, so I thought just as a little extra bonus, we do a few exercises here together today. And of course, if anything doesn't feel right, um, you experience any pain whatsoever, please stop. Please stop. I mean, use, use your common sense and be safe. I want to show you just a few things. We did a, a squat from the chair a moment ago, but what if we just did a little bit of a squat without the chair? So actually stand up, support your body weight, pushing into the heels and the toes. You're going to mobilize all of the muscles in the lower back. I'm just keeping my hands out in front for balance. So this is a nice exercise to do. Again, you know, maybe, maybe 15 to 20 times or whatever feels good for you. You'll be using your glutes, quads, hamstrings, basically all that good stuff, right? And mobilizing the ankle. Okay, so after squats, what about a few lunges? One foot slightly in front of the other, and then bring the other leg back. Hope you can see my legs there in the, in the screen. From here, you can bring your hands to your hips, or again, your arms out front for a little bit of balance. Keeping a strong back, just kind of lower that back knee down a little ways, bending the front knee, and then pick it up. Being sure that this front knee doesn't pass over the front toe, right? If that front knee is coming forward too much, your knee might not feel good. So just check that. This is going to get your heart rate up a little bit, and it's going to work on balance, strength, and a touch of flexibility back here, which is great. So again, maybe 15 to 20 of these. If you've never done a lunge in your life, maybe five would be plenty. <laughs> All right, so let's just do a couple more here together. So again, we've done squats so far, and now we've done some lunges. Let's work on your upper body a little bit. So we'll just warm the upper body up. Let's do a little crossover and then bring those arms back. Cross, cross, and pull them back. Oftentimes the muscles of the chest get really tight, and so this is going to be really good for you 
to just draw everything open. Looks kind of fun, right? Not too bad. All right, from here, we're going to do a few push-ups. Now, option, we can use the chair. Now, if you have a chair that's stable, in other words, it will not slide on the floor, you're completely safe, you can go ahead and use the chair. I'm just going to move this chair a little bit. We're going to, I'm going to balance here, and I'm going to get into a little bit of a plank. Notice my shoulders are over my wrists, and I'm going to do a few gentle push-ups. What that push-up means is you're going to bend your elbows a little, and you're going to push your body back up. For a more advanced person, or if you want to give it a try, you can get on down to the floor and do a few push-ups here as well. So we'll just do a couple more here together. Good. Make sure you're breathing. Always breathe through these exercises. And good. So those are just a few exercises to get you started. You still texting? I gotta let daycare know that I'm running late. They charge if you're late. And I'm not usually one of those people to text and drive, and I was almost done with my text when that car came out of nowhere. Uh -huh. You still appeared in oncoming traffic. And that text message, it never got through. There's a reason it's illegal to text and access the web while driving. <laughs> And welcome back to Inside Healthcare. I hope you caught your breath now at those few workouts there with um, Rachel. So we just have a few minutes left. Uh, what would be um, some of the programs and services that you offer at Ways of Wellness? You mentioned some of them briefly earlier in the program. So what would be some other things that if someone was interested in mm -hmm. seeing you or seeing some of the other fitness trainers? We are, again, um, registered dietitians, personal trainers, and health and wellness coaches. And so depending on what a person wants, one of our best programs is called our Signature Program. And what that does is we go through a discovery session with the health and wellness coach, and that is essentially figuring out your plan. What do you want to do? What do you hope to get out of this? To, to ask all those questions up front so that the time spent on the nutrition and fitness reaps the best reward. Also with that is a wellness assessment, and that's with a, nutrition, a nutritionist and a personal trainer. And we, we kind of take you through some fitness assessments, some of those body composition assessments, essentially to figure out where you're starting from and then to do a nutrition assessment. So those are some key, key points to nail down where you are and where you want to go. And then there are six follow-up sessions to put, the, put that plan into place. And so it's a total of eight visits, and it's, it's just a beautiful package, and that's a great place to start. We, of course, offer more. That's a touch of all of our best. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then there's the 24-7 um, fitness center as well that's open to the public. It is. It's, it's, one of our, it's one of our newer offerings that not everyone knows about. We have, we've got uh, you know, thousands of square feet state over on the, the Woodwinds Health Campus. Yep, state-of-the-art equipment. It's wonderful. It's all new. And um, we're over in the Oak Center, so we're on the Woodwinds Health Campus. And our 24-7 fitness center, we've got the ellipticals, the treadmills, the, we even have a Jacob's Ladder. And uh, if anyone's and ever it, watched, yeah, I was going to say, what is that exactly? It's, it's it's kind of like it's kind of like an escalator, except it's a ladder, <laughs> <laughs> and and you climb it. It was developed as an alternative to running, and so it's low impact. It moves at the speed you move, so it can be fast or it oh, can be slow. It nice. all depends on you, and so that's just one, kind of one of these signature pieces of cardio equipment that we have there. And of course, all of the all of the bells and whistles with the strength trainers. You know, any, any strength training equipment we have there too. I personally mm -hmm. like that. Um, the Pilates reformers that really helped out last year when I had my shoulder injury and was recovering. It really, really helped me a lot. And Pilates Reformer, that's yes. another wonderful program that we have. We have classes and then we've got one-on-one -on -one sessions. And that's good for, for every body. Um, again, yeah, it helps you a lot with your, with your shoulder post-injury. Um, knees, hips, backs, anyone can do Pilates Reformer, even the athletes. Yeah. And um, you also have, if, if you can't get to the location, you can actually still work out with Rachel right in your own home, at your office, wherever you're mm -hmm. at. You have a program called um, It's our Skype, Skype Fitness or Virtual Fitness, you bet. And, um, and that is as simple as once you have sessions purchased with us, all you have to do is say, hey, call me instead. No matter where you are. No matter where you are. Um, I trained uh, one of my clients from Florida last week. <laughs> and I was envious that she was in Florida and not here, I, right? Obviously, yeah. Um, but yeah, so lots of, lots of options. So if someone's interested in getting more information, how would they go about doing that? They go on our website or they can call us. So the website is healtheast.org backslash ways to wellness or just Google ways to wellness. It'll pop right up there. 
And our phone number is the 232-1926. And so that's a 651-232-1926. Well, Rachel, we can it's help you out. Yeah. always a pleasure to have you with us. So thank you for coming back, and especially thank on you. what is a very cold day here. So thank you so much. Really appreciate You're it. You're welcome. Thanks Great for having information. me. Thank you. Thank you. And we'd like to thank you, as always, for joining us. We hope you can join us again next time on Inside Healthcare. We'll see you then, everyone. Thanks. Thank you. Oh, your hands are so warm. Can I hold them? Inside Healthcare. For more information, visit stjohnshospital-mn.org or call 651-326-7800.